Theatre presents Walter Brennan and Joan Evans. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Tennessee's Partner, starring Walter Brennan. And now, here is your hostess, Joan Evans. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Tennessee's Partner, starring Walter Brennan. think any of us knew his real name. Not that our ignorance of it ever made for social inconvenience. Moreover, since it was the custom at Sandy Bar in 1854 to christen most men anew, whatever the old gentleman might originally have called himself, he remains in our memory only as Tennessee's partner. I recall the first episode that led to the trouble. A hot August evening, a bit after sunset. I was sitting in my law office up over the press room of the Clarion. Come in. Judge Lynch? Come in, come in. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Judge. No, oh, not at all, not at all. Sit down. Uh, I was just passing by. Hot night, huh? Powerful. Well, how can I be of service to you? Uh, it's mostly advice I'm looking for, Judge. Legal advice. In a manner of speaking, yeah. It's it's about my partner, Tennessee. I expect you heard what happened over to Red Dog the other night. Uh, I heard he run off with that lady you was fixing to marry. Well, I think it might be more to the truth to say she run off with him. Yeah. <laughs> After all the short deal in Tennessee's given you, you still won't hear a wrong word about him. Oh, it ain't that, Judge. I, I understand Tennessee. He's, uh, he's still a young man. Get down to it, I'd, I can see how that girl would choose him over me. I'd have choose him over me if I was her. Well, that's not exactly the point, old time. I know, I know. He probably shouldn't have gone off without telling me, but... Well, that's his way. That's how he does. I.D. takes him to do a thing, he does it. Can't help himself. I'd say he helps himself to just about everything he wants. Well, I don't hold no grudge. Good luck and happiness to both of them. What I came to ask you about was my claim. I mean, my, uh, our claim, Tennessee's and mine. Yeah, well, what about it? Well, when he left so sudden, like, uh, Tennessee needed funds, of course, so... So he took your whole poke, is that it? Well, I don't want to, you to get the wrong ID, Judge. Half of that dust was Tennessee. And it was his because you gave it to him. He never panned a speck of <laughs> Tennessee ain't much of a miner. Yeah, I don't allow he's much for anything. Except loafing and taking what belongs to others. Even so, half of that dust was Tennessee. You just said he took it all. Well, yes, I, yeah. I guess he figured he'd, he'd need and it. you want to press charges? A against my own partner? You're telling me he robbed No, you. no, I'm just telling you what happened. Oh. Tennessee took the poke, and I figure us being partners, it was his to take, so... Well, I need a little grub steak for the next few months, and that's where I'd like your legal advice. In what way? Well, I already raised near $100 on my own share of the claim, but I figure I'll need maybe that much again to see my way through the fall. So what I'd like to know is, do you think it'd be legal to borrow that much of Tennessee's share? Him not being here to say how he feels about it. You and Tennessee, you got any written agreement between you? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Just our word. Yeah. Now, you think another $100 will see you through? Uh, cash or credit? Y yes, sir. All right, if you're willing, I can arrange the cash for you, and I'll take your personal note. Well, now, that's, that's, that's mighty generous, you judge, but... Well, let's leave it at that. I, I, it'll be a spell before you get it back. We won't date the note. 
Then you think this will be legal like uh, me putting up Tennessee share? It'll just be a personal loan. I don't think he could prove title of the claim anyway. It's nothing he'd have to prove, Judge. I give him a share. Yeah, I kind of figured that. Hm. You mind telling me something, old timer? Mm, no, not if I can, Judge. You heisted Tennessee up out of the gutter four years ago. He crawls back to it every chance he gets. Comes to work and he's never hit a lick in his life. Never lifted a hand to help another living mortal on earth, including you. And there's not a soul in Red Dog or Sandy Bar he hasn't tricked, cheated, or downright robbed. Now, Judge, you yeah. know it, I know it. Nothing either of us can say is going to change it. I just want to ask you one thing. Why do you put up with him? Well, he, I ain't saying Tennessee's ways is, is my ways, and I ain't saying that uh, Tennessee's ways is good ways, but that's how he is, and, and well, he's my partner. <laughs> It was nearly three weeks before Tennessee got back to Red Dog. The circumstances of his rather sudden arrival, when all of us had hopefully thought him gone for good, were at that time disclosed only to his partner. But long after the episode was closed, we learned the details of what took place in the old-timer's cabin the night Tennessee returned from San Francisco. Here, go on, help yourself to another cup of coffee. Thank you, partner. You've been riding hard, ain't you? I don't recollect ever riding harder. You hungry? There's still some bacon left and some beans. Coffee will be fine. Uh, I hope you won't take it as meddling, Tennessee. Uh, I was young myself once and know how easy it is for a man to... to well, to, to find himself in a fix. So I, uh, I just want to say, if you're in any kind of trouble, you can count on me. I appreciate that deeply. Uh, I know you like to play your own hand and on most things, and I respect that, Tennessee. So if you don't want to talk about it, that's Jim Dandy. Or if you do, like I said, I'll be proud to help. Thank you. Well, I expect you're curious to learn about Miss Benedict. Uh, if you mind to tell me, yeah. You know, I may have saved you from making a great mistake there, Euclid. I barely saved myself. Well, I take it then they want no wedding. You take it rightly. By the time the stage arrived at Stockton, I realized she wasn't interested in anything but my money. You mean our money? Yeah, exactly. So I went on ahead to San Francisco alone. And she stayed in Stockton? Well, her old job waiting tables at the hotel where you met her was still open. I, I think it's all for the best. Uh, then uh, the trouble you had was in San Francisco, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Money trouble? In a manner of speaking. Gambling money trouble? Well, to be accurate, the specific disagreement centered about a deck of cards. But I'd say money was a collateral issue. Mm. Someone catch you cheating? Yeah, that was the prevalent opinion among the other players, yeah. Mm. Any gunplay? Oh, disproportionate amount, considering the size of the stakes. Mm. Sorry to hear that, Tennessee. You're running from uh, a murder charge then, huh? No, self-defense, if the men are beyond help. The men? I thought there was just one. Three, all told. Three? Well, you know how fuss like that can get out of hand, partner. Well, yeah. what you gonna do now? Well, I'll need a steak before I move on. I believe I have a week before anyone from San Francisco trails me here to Red Dog. Uh, well, I've panned some dust these last weeks. No, I... no, no, Euclid. I've taken more than enough from you. This is one hand I will have to play alone. You know you're welcome to anything I got. I know, partner. I know and I thank you. All I want is a few days to rest up and exploit whatever opportunities present themselves. It was Friday night, two days later, before anyone else in the bar learned that Tennessee had returned to his partner's cabin. Curiously enough, the man to spread the worst of the bad news was an absolute stranger to the community. Tennessee accosted him early that evening, just at the mouth of the pass leading to Grizzly Canyon. I say there, friend. Yeah? You uh, going into Red Dog? That's right. You mind if I ride along with you? I'm glad to have you. You live here, boss? No, not far. I know these trails pretty well, too, and it's risky riding them at night unaccompanied. Yeah, I guess you never know who you're going to meet. No. You, uh... You going to Red Dog on business? Yeah, I represent a new hardware firm. 
We just opened up a branch office in San Francisco. San Francisco, huh? Yeah, business is booming. I, I never had it like this in Kansas. This your first trip to Red Dog? That's right. If I get as many orders here as I picked up in Stockton, I, I'm going to set me some kind of a record. Yeah. Are those your wares strapped there on the mule? Well, just samples. I can't sell those. No, I, I take the orders and the firm ships it out later. Isn't that rather risky, shipping on consignment to back country like this? Well, how do you mean? Well, what if the buyer refuses to accept the goods when they arrive or say won't pay for them? Well, they pay up, never you fear. If they don't, we keep the deposit. Oh, I see. Then you insist upon a cash deposit with every order you take. Yeah, a minimum of 10%. I, well, I collected as much as 25 from dealers back in Stockton. And you entrust that money to the mails? No, sir. I keep it right here with me until I... Well, you know, for a stranger, you ask an awful lot of questions. I've just one more request. What's that? I'll trouble you for your knife, your pistols, and your money. Now, don't do anything hasty. I might have known. You see, your weapons might get you into trouble at Red Dog, and your money's a temptation to the evilly disposed. You ain't gonna get away with this, mister. Here. Much obliged. And now this is as far as you go. Well, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna watch you turn your horse around and watch you ride back to Stockton. You, you wouldn't use that gun on me. On the contrary. I think you said your address was San Francisco? Uh, that, that's right. Yeah. Excellent. Sometime I shall endeavor to call. Now, I've always had the feeling that what happened afterward was nobody's fault but Tennessee's. He might have left the territory that evening with a few hundred dollars he'd taken from the stranger, and none of us would have been the wiser. But Tennessee had the same fatal weakness that plagues every daredevil. He was overconfident. And as he rode down into Red Dog and started up the lighted main street, he spied the bat-wing doors of the arcade saloon. There was a poker game in progress, and he felt with a little more luck he could double his night's earnings and be on the trail before sunup. He decided to chance it. Well, look who's here. Evening, Charlie. Judge. Tennessee. Last I heard, you was in San Francisco. Oh, it's a fine town. Deal me in, will you? Uh, this is a cash game, Tennessee. Yes, yeah, so I observe. Is that enough cash for you, Judge? Well, must have struck it fair. Well, what happened? Rich uncle leave you a fortune? Let's say a Dutch uncle. <laughs> here we go. Andy five, jacks are better. Andy five. Up to you, Judge. Mm hmm. Open for five. I'll stay. Dealer stays for five. Card? Uh, two. Two, Charlie, please. Can you see? One. Well, yeah. going for a flush? We'll soon see. One to you, and, uh, dealer takes three. Mm. Your opener's judge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, check to you, Tennessee. I'll bet ten. Well, looks like you went and connected, don't it? Well, you call, uh, find out. Sure. He cleaned me out of every cent. That, that's his horse. Hits right out front. Right. Take it easy, take it easy. What's all that racket? Sheriff, with a stranger just coming in the saloon. Can we finish the hand, gentlemen? He got nearly $250 from me. Cool as you please. Well, if he's here in town, we'll find uh, him. Jim, what's all the excitement? Well, this man claims he was just robbed on the trail into Grizzly Canyon. Well, that's him. What? I, I told you I seen his horse outside. That's the man that just robbed me. Are you referring to me, stranger? Yes, sir, I'm referring to you. You know this man, Tennessee? Tennessee. I don't believe I've ever seen him before, Sheriff. What seems to be the trouble? The trouble? The trouble? Oh, calm down, mister. I'll ask the questions. He claims a man just held him up on the trail, took away his guns and his money. Now he says you're the man. <sighs> I'm afraid he's mistaken. No offense, stranger. No offense, Sheriff. He's the one. I'm uh, telling Tennessee, you. Tennessee, I think we can clear this up. Yes, Judge. You mind to tell us where you got that money you're playing with? With all due respect, Judge, I can't see that that's anyone's business but my own. He stole it. That's where he got it. Calm down. $248. You see, if that ain't how much he's got. Exactly how much money do you have, Tennessee? Judge, I'm surprised at you. A total stranger comes in here, charges practically the first person he sees with robbing him, and you well, all Why don't you look in his saddlebag out on his horse? I bet you're going to find my guns in there, both of them. What do you say to that, Tennessee? Can we look in your saddlebags? 
I'm afraid, Judge, that... There won't be time for that! All right, now, everybody, keep calm! Put that gun down. Stay right where you are. I won't use this if I don't have to. Tennessee, you're making a big mistake. I think not, Judge. I'm sorry to inconvenience you, stranger, but it was unavoidable. Sheriff, stop him! You'll never get out of the canyon, Tennessee. If I don't, a couple of your posse men are going to be awful sorry. Hey, shut out the light! All right, let's get riding. If we move fast, we can catch him. There were three separate trails out of Red Dog leading to the Canyon Pass. And in the darkness and confusion, no one was absolutely sure which one Tennessee had taken. So we all struck out to suit ourselves, each rider galloping off in his favorite direction and howling like a lost soul. I was one of the last to start, and by the time I reached the fork where the river trail cuts up into the mountains, I decided there was only one logical place for Tennessee to make for, once he realized that he couldn't outrun us. Tennessee, that you, partner? No, no, old timer, it's me. Oh, evening, Judge. This doc couldn't see you. He had some shooting down in the bar. Anything wrong? Plenty. Uh, you sure that Tennessee's not here? No, he ain't been back to the cabin since early afternoon. What's doing? They're looking for him, the sheriff, half the town. What's it for? A hold up. Robbed a stranger on the trail. You certain sure Tennessee done it? He shot his way out of the arcade saloon when the stranger accused him of it, and it... Listen, listen. There's a rider coming this way. Yeah, figured he'd be along. And now, Jim... Better let me take him, old-timer. I'll see he gets a fair trial. Euclid! Euclid, you in there? I need a fresh horse! Is that you, partner? Uh, no, Tennessee. It's me, the judge. I'm sorry we didn't get to finish our hand, judge. So am I. I think I had you beat. What are you holding just now? Two revolvers and a bowie knife. Two bars and an ace, huh? Well, I guess you're right. That takes me. We held Tennessee's trial that very night in the old loft over the express wagon. The excitement and the personal feeling of the chase were over. And all concerned were ready to listen patiently to any defense of the accused. I should in honesty state that no defense, however moving, would have swayed the jury from the conviction that Tennessee deserved to hang. Deserved it five times over. But if the law of Sandy Bar was implacable, it was not vengeful. So when a tap was heard at the door and it was announced that Tennessee's partner had come on behalf of the prisoner, he was admitted at once without question. <clears throat> Evening, Judge. <laughs> Gentlemen. Tennessee. Evening, partner. I was just passing by, Judge. You mind if I set my carpet bag on your desk? Go right ahead. I was just passing by, and I thought I'd stop in to see how things was getting on with Tennessee there, my partner. It's a hot night. I just remember any such weather before on the bar. Uh, old-timer, you got anything to say behalf of the prisoner? Uh, that's it, Judge. Uh, I come here as Tennessee's partner, knowing him nigh on four years off and on, wet and dry and luck and out of luck. His ways ain't always my ways, but there ain't any points in that young man, ain't any liveliness he's been up to as I don't know. And as you say to me, do you know anything in his behalf? And I says to you, what should a man know of his partner? Is that all you have to say? Well, it ain't for me to say anything again him now, is it? Then what do you want to say? Well, now, uh, what's the case? Here's Tennessee, wants money, wants it bad, and don't like to ask his old partner for it. But what does Tennessee do? He lays for a stranger, and he fetches that stranger. And then you lays for him, Judge, and you fetches him. And the honors is easy. I put it to you, being a fair-minded man, if this ain't so. Tennessee... You any questions to ask this man? Uh, no, no, Judge. I play this hand alone. Well, all right, old timer. Make your play. Well, uh, to come down to bedrock, it's just like this. Tennessee there is played it pretty rough and expensive, like on the stranger and on this here camp, too. And now, what's the fair thing? Some would say more and some would say less. So I open my carpet bag and say to you, 
Here's $300 in coarse gold and a watch. It's all my pile and call it square. Oh, no, you could not. Who's trying to bribe this order. court? That's what order, doing. order, order, order in this court. Order. Old timer, do you understand what you've done? You realize the seriousness of this action? I'm, I'm just trying to do the fair thing. Judge. Well, the fair thing in this case is to see justice done. And justice ain't for sale. I meant no offense, Judge. Well, you've given offense, serious offense, to the dignity of this court. And take your belongings and put them back in that bag and we'll, we'll say no more about it. All right, but I want to remark, Judge, that, that this here was a lone hand, played alone, without my partner. Very well. But now, if you have anything to say to Tennessee, you better say it now, old timer. Thank you, Judge. Tennessee, uh... Goodbye, Euclid. Goodbye, partner. I just stopped in as I was passing to see how things was getting on. Two men never again met each other alive. Tennessee was sentenced to hang, and at the break of day was marched closely guarded to meet that fate up the top of Marley's Hill. His partner didn't arrive until after sentence had been carried out. And as the old-timer's two-wheel cart drew up to the fatal tree, we noticed it contained a rough oblong box half filled with bark and pine tassels further decorated with slips of willow, buckeye blossoms. Hey, gentlemen, I've come for the deceased. It's all the same to the committee. I, I can wait. Uh, I don't want to hurry things. I'm not working today. If there's anyone present who would care to join the funeral, they can come along. Most of us accepted the invitation. We followed the little cart back up the trail through Grizzly Canyon till we reached the outskirts of Sandy Bar and the solitary cabin of Tennessee's partner. Rejecting any offer of assistance, the old man deposited the box into a waiting, shallow grave and, mounting the little mound of earth beside it, took off his hat, slowly mopped his face with a handkerchief. <coughs> When a man has been running free all day, what's the natural thing for him to do? Why, to come home. And if he ain't in a condition to come home, why, what can his best friend do? Why, he brings him home. And here's Tennessee, been running free, and we brings him home from his wandering. It ain't the first time I brought him back to this cabin when he couldn't help himself. It ain't the first time me and Jenny Mamule have waited for him on the hill and picked him up and fetched him home when he couldn't speak and, and didn't know me. And now that it's the last time, why, you see, it's, it's sort of rough on his partner. Now, now, gentlemen, the funeral's over. Yeah. And my thanks and... In Tennessee's thanks to you for for your trouble. From that day forward, the rude health and strength of Tennessee's partner seemed visibly to decline. And when the rainy season fairly set in and the tiny grass blades were beginning to peep from the rocky mound over Tennessee's grave, the old man took to his bed. Sheriff and I had stopped by to pay him a visit that last night. The pines beside the cabin were swaying in the storm and the roar and rush of the river could be heard in the distance. He'd seemed to doze off. We were about to take our leave when suddenly Tennessee's partner lifted his grizzled head from the pillow. 
It's it's time to go for Tennessee. Hey, now, easy. Now, all time. Yeah. Easy now. I must put Jenny in the cart. He's out of his head. Yeah. There now. There. Steady, Jenny. Steady hold, gal. My. How dark it is. Look out for the ruts now. Look out for him too, old gal. Sometimes, you know, when he's had too much, he drops right down in the trail. Keep on straight up to the pine on the top of the hill. There, there, I told you so. There he is, coming this way, too, all by himself. He's sober. His face is a-shining. Tennessee, partner! And so, they met. us have heard the expression, it is better to give than to receive. It means being kind, giving of ourselves and our services to others, performing those little acts of thoughtfulness and consideration that will make life more pleasant for those about us. You know, you, the unique thing about kindness is that it's something very contagious. A kind word or act on our part will, will not only bring happiness and encouragement to others, it'll do more. It will inspire others to be kind. In a home, in a family, kindness helps so much. Being constantly thoughtful and considerate of the feelings and needs of, 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 of one another makes a home the happy and contented place it should be, a place where all are working together in peace and harmony. To be truly kind, we must forget ourselves, have our thoughts on someone else, someone who is the source of kindness, God. And our thoughts are lifted to God by prayer, family prayer. So to bring kindness into your home with all the blessings that flow from it, pray together as a family. Pray together tonight. Remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Hollywood Family Theater has brought you transcribed Tennessee's Partner, starring Walter Brennan. Joan Evans was your hostess. Featured as Judge Lynch was Lawrence Dobkin. Others in our cast were Herb Ellis, Robert Easton, Billy Bauckham, and Leo Curley. The script was adapted from a story by Bret Hart and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present... Under Fire, starring Paul Pacerni, Ricardo Montalban will be your host. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. <laughs>